All right, it's time for the uh, Rocco Pasifumi uh, movie review. And we call it Around the Movie Block with, with the Rock. Rock. All right, so uh, Rocco, take it away and tell us what you thought of White Boy. Rick! <laughs> Thank you, Howie. Yes, uh, the, mo the movie I'm doing this week is White Boy Rick. Howie and I went to go see it together, and that was, that was a lot of fun to do. Um, it's directed by Yann Demange, and it stars uh, Matthew McConaughey and Richie Merritt. Um, it takes place in 1980s Detroit, where Richard Wersch Jr., the veritable white boy Rick in the, of the story, uh, played by Merritt, was a street hustler, an FBI informant, and a drug kingpin all before he turned 16. Uh, the th first thing that stands out about this movie is the fact that the sort of, you get kind of get immersed in this environment, which is 1980s Detroit, which is like a very sort of run down, like even in the 80s, like, like, like Detroit was already kind of in, 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 in like dire straits economically. So you really get immersed in the whole kind of environment. I think that's one of the strong points of the movie. The other strong points of the movie is a lot of the, the principal cast, you know, particularly Matthew McConaughey, who plays, uh, uh, Richard uh, Senior, and he really, he really is like a strong part of the whole movie. I think he definitely gives the film a lot of its weight. And um, Richard Merritt, who had not really acted before, he does a pretty good job for a first time uh, role. Definitely, he definitely has um, a good amount of uh, gravi gravity for the the character he's playing. Some of the weaknesses, though, of the film prior to that. Um, you know, with all that is, is the fact that it's, um, the, we don't, I mean, as much as the, like, the, the story tries to paint a picture of, of this, um, of, of White Boy Rick and, and what happened to him, you don't get a full sense of that. The story gets a little murky at times, so it's a little difficult at times to really get a sense of what's happening. But, you know, with anything, you know, you, you know the, the script isn't enough, you know, you, you know, you have... The, um, the, the cast, the cast really works well. The, uh, the other cast, the supporting cast, the ones who play um, White Boy Rick's sister and grandfather, they're another strong element of the movie and that definitely helps the movie considerably. Um, but all in all, it's a really good movie. I would definitely recommend it. It's a dark movie, so I feel like if, um, if that's something that you, know, you can handle, I think it's worth seeing because it's definitely, it does paint an interesting story about um, a young man who gets caught up in the situation, a man who um, has, you know, kind of like a, like a rough, you know, life and, and all that, you know, rough family situation, and he gets caught up in all this kind of stuff. And the kind of the true to life nature of the story is just one of those things that, you know, how he loves these kinds of movies, particularly, and, and he really, you know, get, you know, it, you really get a sense of how crazy and how amazing it is and how improbable that something like this would even happen. But, um, but no, that's part of what makes this movie pretty good, and I think that a lot of people will, um, will, will find it very, very compelling, for sure. So, um, all in all, I give White Boy Rick three out of five stars. So thank you. Okay, Rocco, and uh, yes. I just want to make a few on. points on, my, uh, on the movie. Is that done? Um, yes. One of the things I, I felt unfortunate about, um, just the storyline, is that um, the FBI got a hold of this kid when he was 15 yes. and made him an informant. Yes. And he helped the FBI convict several drug dealers in, in the area. And for this kid at 17 um, to get a life sentence, I thought was absurd. Yeah. And I think that the, the FBI, not to have any um, pull with the judge after he worked for the FBI and helped the FBI yes. convict quite a few drug dealers. Yeah. And they said that at the end of the movie that he landed the longest drug sentence in the history of Michigan. So I just kind of felt that um, it really was a, 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 a very severe sentence for someone that... Didn't had, directly um, kill people. Yeah, he didn't kill people. Yeah. You know, did he... Um, he still cocaine, drugs, yes. yes he did. But, to give him a life sentence for someone that had worked with the FBI, yeah. uh, I thought it was a, a very hard... They really dropped the ball. Yeah, they, they really uh, dropped the ball. But um, And it really speaks to like people's 
it, it really speaks to people's feelings about, you know, right, right, right now in the political scene with, with their issues with the FBI. And I feel like this um, particular movie is a highlight of where, you know, somewhere where the FBI kind of bungled a bit. Yeah, and, and you know, one thing that, that I want to add, too, is yes. that, that I felt is that um, I thought uh, Matthew McConaughey yes. really uh, was outstanding in yes. this movie. And it showed that even though he, had, he was a flawed person yeah. and that um, both of his kids had problems, yes. he was a very compassionate yes. person. And like his daughter in the movie yes. um, hated him and wanted yes. nothing to do with him and she got involved with a bad guy and that she was in drugs. Yes. And it showed how he didn't give up on her, yes. and that he rescued her from a seedy, infested um, drug place, yes. and brought her home, and rehabilitated her. That was one of the most harrowing scenes of the whole movie. Yeah, and there was another scene that showed how compassionate he was. Is that yes. There was one scene where a white boy Rick, he was only 16 or 17 at the time, yeah. a little boy came to the house and informed him that the girl that he had um, relations, a, a relations with was pregnant and that uh, they should be responsible of supporting her. Yes. And uh, the scene where they had to go to the house yeah. and see the baby, for a, a little girl for the first time, yeah. was so touching. That was very sweet. When um, white boy Rick saw the girl for the first yeah. time, but really, what really melted your heart was when Matthew McConaughey saw his granddaughter for the first right. time. And he walked over to the little girl and, and the people in the room and right. said, there is no way that little girl could be my grandchild because she is way too good looking <laughs> that, uh, of my son. And it was just so touching. It was and a sweet, it was a it, sweet it was moment. A sweet, moment. sweet moment. Yeah. And, um, from that day on, right. um, they they loved that child yes. and supported that child, yeah. and that was really a touch. And it showed how Matthew McConaughey, even right. though he was flawed yeah. and he had issues, right. he really did the best he could do yes. for his son yeah. and his daughter. It really speaks to how you know when you have stories, and even if they're stories that you probably have seen before in other movies. It all goes back to having a good script and having good actors do it. And I think if you have that, you're able to make, you know, something that might seem familiar a lot more compelling than it would be. So definitely a lot of the strong points of White Boy Rick goes to the script and definitely went to the cast, especially Ma Ma Matthew McConaughey. He definitely was a major get for the movie, for sure. And also, let's uh, give some credit to Bruce Dern as the grandpa. Yes, he, he, was, he was awesome, too. Don't he's, you think, a great, he's a great character actor. I've seen him in other things, particularly... The thing I know him most for is uh, Big Love on HBO. He, he had a similar role on that, and uh, he was in Nebraska. He was very good in that. So um, he's definitely, you know, shown like just how much, you know, it, you know. There's a lot of great character actors there in Hollywood, and and Bruce Stern is definitely a, a prime example of of one of those like just great actors that even if they're not, they've never been like, you know, the lead. You know, it definitely shows like even the smallest roles are, are ones that have a lot of gravity if the, you know um, you have the right people. Yeah, and, and just a small sidebar of this movie. Yes. Um, they they showed a clip in this movie. Um, yeah. Of the uh, Tommy Hearns, uh, Marvin Hagler fight, and you know, being from Boston at the time, yeah. it was Marvin Hagler, the guy, the Detroit hitman against the Boston guy, Marvin Hagler, the Brockton yeah. guy, and um, yeah, and. <laughs> In my life, I've seen a lot of boxing, but that first round between Marvin Hagler and Tommy the Hitman Hearn was by far the greatest round in the history of boxing. Those two guys stood toe to toe yeah. for three minutes, and it was incredible, epic boxing. And they talked yeah. about that fight, and they had a little scene where this guy uh, promised them front row seats, and when yeah. they went to get the seats, yeah. they weren't there. And, uh, they were not happy about it. You so that's like it. a big sports zeitgeist at the time. Yeah, but it was, I, you know, honestly, I, I, um, folks, uh, Rocco gave it three out of five yeah. stars. Yeah. I would highly recommend. Yes, but I would see. still highly recommend. Boy Rick. Excellent right. movie. No, it was very good.